Honorable Justice Shivraj V. Patil, Honorable Justice Mariman, Galaxy of Judges who have come up, who have assembled here, coming across the country, and the distinguished audience. I was in a dilemma whether to speak in native language, Kannada, or English. When I had a conversation with Jesse Shivraj Party, in which language should I speak? He told me, he asked me to speak in English because many people have come from across the country. So I would prefer that you speak in English. As you know, you can't violate the order of the Supreme Court, otherwise it would be contempt. <laughs> and also the invitation. I notice that I don't know how many thousands of programs I've attended for more than four decades now. Endless, countless public functions. But this is the only function I have This is the only first program where I notice that there is no chair for politicians on the dais. <laughs> I think just the Shuraj party something hidden idea not to make you embarrassed. You the judges, honorable judges, probably he didn't want to make you embarrassed. Because many times they appear before you, so he didn't want you to sit down and make them sit on the dais, perhaps. When I this is the first time that I'm introduced to former judge, High Supreme Court Judge Nariman. I was just thinking his name, I was fitting his name into two, Nari and Man. <laughs> Perhaps his family is very much close to Ardha Nari Shwara Leela You know, Nari and Man, right? I don't know if that is something connected with the Ardhanarishwara, Leela, Ishwara. Well, we had annual sports for our students in our Mata uh, schools and colleges. There are nearly 50,000 <coughs> students studying in our schools and colleges. And we had organized annual sport for the final competition during the last week of December. There were nearly 2,000 players, our students. And it was inaugurated by the former chairman of Legislative Council, Mr. Shankar Murthy. While inaugurating it, he asked the questions who were standing in front of the flag. He asked the students, when did our country get the freedom? The students in chorus said 1947, August 15. Nothing new. But next time, in the next breath of his voice, he asked the students, when did you lose the freedom? When did our country lose the freedom? No doubt it got the freedom in 1947, August 15th. But when did we lose it? 
but the students were very much perplexed. I was hoping that Shankar Murthy would answer the question. After a while, he said, I do not know. You know, his question and his answer, I don't know, made me think over it. So I said in my speech, Namma Dejada, the, all the kings and rulers of our country, we lost the freedom when the rulers, kings and monarchs of our country did not fight united like our Kitturani Chinnamma, single-handed, she fought against the British and, and won in the battle. Jhanshi Rani Lakshmi Bhai and Tipu Sultan. If all the rulers of our country had united together, the British would not have ruled our country for three centuries. This was my reply when we lost our freedom. A few days ago, a week ago, Two couples had come to our Matha, whom I know for the last four decades, even when I was studying in the University of Vienna in Austria. Both of them had come, both the families. One family was from England. I asked the lady, what is your answer? When did you lose our, because the British have ruled our country for more than three centuries. You are living there for the last more than few, 40 years. And what is your answer for this? When did we lose our freedom? This was the curt lip cry given by the lady living in Newcastle in, in England. <coughs> she said, we lost our freedom to our politicians on the very day of 15th August 1947 <laughs> when we celebrated getting freedom from the British imperialism. This was a reply. She continued to say, our country got divided and the both the arms left and right of Mother India were cut off by our politicians and made her disabled. This was the third reply given by the lady from England. Namadesha Srimanta Rashtravagi Dharu Rajakarni Guru Matu Srimantaru Hechu Hechu Shrimantara Vati Dare, Badavaru Matta Krishikaru, Hechu Hechu Kadu Badavara Vati Dare. This is what she lamented in her. So I wrote an article. You may be aware that I regularly write a weekly column in Vijay Karnataka every 15 fortnight on Thursday, every fortnight. I narrated one very, very interesting uh, episode, real episode. We're going back, back to 1936, there was Olympic, you know, sports in Germany. And you know, Hitler was there. An Indian hockey team had won the Olympic, uh, in Olympic sports, two times they had won the golden medal. Golden prize, gold prize, Chindapadaka. But this time when they went, when they did the, uh, the trial, or what is it called, uh, prior to the game, uh, demonstration uh, play or something like that. So the Germans have won, I mean, have scored four goals, whereas India got only one in the demonstration play. But the Indians living in Germany, they were so unhappy, they were so, you know, agitated. They sent an SOS to New Delhi asking the British government to send one, I think, one very good cricket player, Ali or somebody. Uh, they made an appeal, SOS telegram. But the British commanding officer didn't give him sanction and leave. Instead, he deputed an ordinary soldier called Dhyan Chand to the Olympics sports. And the Dhyan Chand dancing was airlifted 
He arrived just before the commencement of the sports on exactly on at 11 o'clock, 15th, 15th day of 1936. And Hitler was sitting in the pavilion to witness. He was hoping that his team will win the sports, hockey sports. For the first half of the well play, nobody could get any, any goal. But somehow while playing, the German goalkeeper's hockey stick somehow hit the teeth of Dan Chan. And he lost, he lost the teeth. He was profusely, he was, blood was profusely coming out of, from his mouth. He was taken to pavilion, but he didn't lose courage. He again you know, come back, came back to the battle, to the cricket field, um, to the hockey field, and continuously he scored three goals at a stretch. 1936, remember. At that time, the Hitler, he got up from his seat and went away. By the end of the day, the Indian hockey team scored eight goals, eight to one, and won the cricket match in a thumb, thumb in, a, in a majority, eight to one, right? It was a glorious uh, time. In the evening, Hitler called for the Janschen. Remember, Hitler, the great dictatorial dictator, dictator of the country, he called Janschen. And I was told that you, will, I will, I will just read out the, uh, his dialogue, which I have translated it from German. I will just read out the, the in Kannada. Ninna Tanda, Nirikshagu Miri. Tumba Chanagi at Adi, Abinandan. Ninagero Gaya went to the Tiradabuntu, Iga Higidia. I was told that you got hurt. So, how do you feel now? If the last time. The answer, the answer. Indianus Pardeli, Nanda won the Halanu, Germany, Kreda and the Lee Neti Tere, Iga Parvagila, Nimahadi Rati take it, and Ivati. I have one, one of my teeth, what is it, pinned into the, so sewn into the Olympic Stadium here, I am quite all right now. Then Hitler, smiling, asked him, What do you do? What is your profession when you don't play hockey game? Then Dan Sen's chat, Bharatiya Saina Dali, Nanubba Sadharana Sipai. I'm only an ordinary soldier in Indian Army. Then Hitler further said, Ninna Hange, Nanu Oppa Sadharna Sipai Agide. Britisharu Ninna Shakti Samartya Unnu Gurutu Sivudilla. Nanna German Saina Dali, Ninna Nu Dota Officer and Agi Madam Tene, Nanna Nazi Saina K. Seruti Ya. The Britishers will not recognize your, you know, power. You are bigger. I am going to make you a big officer in my army. Would you like to come and join? Then the Nazi army was looking at the face of Dan Chen, hoping that he would join. He would, he would not decide. But Dan Chen replied, Nivu Tori the Gaurava the Regale, Matu Dharala Taneke, the Nevadu. Bharata Dali Nani Rava Sipai Hude, Este Chikadaru, Nano Bharatiya. Bharata Nana Matru Bhumi, Nano Bharatina Ye Nama Jaradi Yanu Bay Sutte. This was the national patriotism of the old generation of our country. Then Hitler looked at him and without Asking further questions, he went away. <coughs> Recently, last my, uh, August, I had been to Hawaii. I went, I visited 
a Hindu monastery in, uh, in a small island in Hawaii. It's called Hawaii. You may be knowing. Hinduism today is, has a wide circulation worldwide. There were some Hindu sannyasins, but they were not from India. So they were so looking, I, I, I was very happy to see their saintly face. So the, one of the uh, sannyasins took me around his, uh, their uh, ashram, nearly 400 acres of land, beautiful uh, forest. And he showed me so many idols there of 36 Nayan Mars, Maravad Mur Punaratara Rundi Kedir Bada, Avra Vidra Vadidwari. And I saw, I noticed one uh, idol, one statue, who didn't appear to be, to me, a Nayan Mark. Guru Mota Ru Nayan Purad Nandai, then Khan Stilla. So I drew his attention. He doesn't look like one of the 36 Nayan Mars, Arvat Purad, 63, Arvat Mur Purad Nandai. Whose statue is this? He narrated me in the incident, which was really, really a big puzzle for me. And it will be for you who have ascended here, here the luminous of judges. And that, his, that statue, his name was Kudayat Swami. What is it to do with India? I am I'm told. He was the High Court Judge of Bangalore way back in 1860 or something like that. I would very much like our Bangalore High Court to, to look into the, the, the you know, whatever uh, papers are there, archives, library in the Bangalore High Court. So this Kudayat Swami, uh, 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 one case was, he was hearing a, um, what is it, um, murder case. After hearing for so many months, he came to know that the accused person is really a murderer. So for a murderer, he had to be, the capital punishment should have been given, right? So, you know, what I did, he wrote everything, but at the end, while passing the orders for, you know, to hang him, capital punishment, he writes like this. He writes, God created this man in the open court. He proclaims, God has created this man. Who am I to decree his death? He simply gets up from the chair and walks away from the court hall and never comes back to the court again. And he takes to sannyasa and goes to Jaya in, in, in Islam and leaves a saintly life there. I have the correct date of his death. He died. Uh, somewhere around, no, no, I've, I've forgotten to note down, somewhere 1891 or so. So I would very much like the Bangalore High Court to look into the archives of the court and see the, this incident. There is a nice picture, picture uh, a, a painting available on the internet, Kudayat Swami. So now whether he did the right thing or he wrong, it is for the learned judges to decide. But it is an interesting episode. His conscience being permit to give him death sentence. But he just walked out of the court hall. So this leads to law, I think it can be debated. I want to ascertain the this incident whether it really happened in the Bangalore High Court. Now, coming back to this ceremony, Justice Shivaraj Patil and myself, after his retirement, almost every day we are uh, talking over the telephone.